Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am in studio today working on the continuation of the journal that I started yesterday. I wanted to kind of finish up my signatures and work on the cover. So I started yesterday with a new vintage collage, volume one I'm calling it because I think I will be doing more because I just had so much fun doing this, with a, a lot of digital papers that can be folded in half to make folios and cut up to make pockets and that sort of thing, and even some real simple backgrounds. So if you missed this video, I'll put a link down below for the kit that's in my Etsy shop, and this will be in a playlist uh, together so that you can watch from the beginning if you'd like. So yesterday I started with showing the kit and then showing how I printed everything out with things on the back sides or what type of paper I used and all that sort of thing to get ready for my journal. I ended up with three signatures. Each signature has five folios in it, and we're gonna go from there. So a couple things that you might want to do before you sew these into a journal cover. Sometimes I've done videos where I actually will do all the decorating that I wanna do and everything before I put, put them in because I never know when I might wanna do sewing on my sewing machine you know, around a page or sew a pocket on or that sort of thing. So I like to sometimes do that. The last journal or two that I've done, I'm actually sewing them in and then going back and decorating them. And I'm gonna, this is gonna kind of be that way, but sometimes there's things that you wanna add that you know you need to do beforehand. So yesterday when I showed the kit, one of the things I meant to show, I also printed were a bunch of recycled envelopes. I took my digitals and then I just cropped them in sort of a random envelope shape. Maybe I could get two that I liked out of one digital by turning how I cropped it and that sort of thing. So I ended up with like 35 or so, I think, different designs for envelope cropped from my digitals. And I ended up printing them on recycled envelopes that I had used some book page to cover up any writing that I didn't want to see through. You could also cover that up with just plain white paper if you want your design um, to show printed like this without any book page on it. But I don't, I don't always mind the layers. So most of these I did on just one side, but you can just, you know, using different cropped, you know, shapes out of your, uh, any digitals that you have and print up some envelopes that you can use for flips and pockets and that sort of thing. So I had done those. Um, I ended up doing a couple on both sides that I'll show you. Those I decided to do single-sided because I don't know where it's going to go in a book. And if I didn't want to waste the ink in case it is going to get glued to the page, then I don't need printing on the other side. But if I'm going to fold it in half and use it in a signature, then I want both sides printed. But I may want to choose what pattern I have, you know, to, to coordinate or whatever. So I've just done those on one side to get started. The other thing that I printed uh, was some washi tape that I made up. I took the digitals and then some other things from this kit and just created an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And then I printed these onto rice paper so that it would have the same kind of uh, feel as washi tape you know, which is kind of thin, but really sturdy. So I've printed it on that, and then I ended up uh, putting it, running it through my Xyron sticker maker so that they're all ready to go. That made it also easier. If I cut my eight and a half by 11 sheet, my Xyron is two and a half inches uh, strips, I think. But if I, if I just cut my rice paper to that width, then I can run them through, and then it was easier to cut them uh, than trying to cut the thin rice paper on my guillotine cutter, which did work, but it's a little a little harder to get it straight. So I've made a bunch of these. I may uh, make this available as a freebie on my Facebook page uh, or even a link down in this video. I haven't decided. I need to do that still. But I, I have this that I created, and then I also created a piece of fabric that I'm gonna show that I'm gonna use. So those are two sheets that I could not fit into the Etsy listing because they limit you on how much uh, space that you have as far as how big your files are. So I went right to the limit to get all of these 14 sheets in. So I think I'll offer those other items that I created after, the washi tape, the fabric, 
And then I think there's going to be something else. Oh, maybe an end paper. I'm going to do another kit that's that has just some backgrounds, end papers, that sort of thing that you can use in lots of different journals. But I'm going to be using them in this kit, so I might offer those as, as freebies. So uh, to get this started then, I wanted to go through and make sure that if I wanted to put an envelope in before I sew my signatures, I decided where that was gonna go. So I did have one that I had printed both sides and I liked how the coloration was gonna fit. Um, I folded it in half so that I would have, you know, it would go through two sides through as a signature. And, and then I went ahead and I lined the inside with the dictionary page. And just so I have that done, you could do it after, but it was much easier to do this now before I sewed it in. So I, I lined it. So now it's a nice thick pocket. I did go ahead and stitch with my sewing machine and went ahead and used my uh, vintage photo distress oxide to just kind of uh, get rid of the white edges. So I've decided I like this one on this uh, in the signature here. So it, it's gonna look like that. I'm not gonna put any more in this one, but I really, I liked how the colors just happen to work nicely with this page. So that's my first signature. This one, I ended up not putting any envelopes in, I think, but there was something, this page, this page I didn't distress yet. So I wanna go ahead and do that. And this is a step that you don't have to do, you know? I just, I really like grungy, looks and i i really like that aged um stained paper look and not i i don't love white edges so i kind of like to stay consistent throughout my journal so i just go around the edges i'm using for this one vintage photo um in this journal i've also used some ground espresso walnut stain is also another color that kind of works well with that but i'm just going to kind of you know, grunge it up a little bit more. It just gives me that extra kind of added layer of um, depth to my collage. There's, these are going to get decorated later, you know, after they're in the book um, in some way by whoever. If I sell this one, which I think I'm going to, since now I'm kind of getting a list of people who have wanted some of the previous ones that I've started. And I, I may sell those, I just haven't decided. It's, you know, you spend so much time working on these and especially if it's something I haven't tried before, I kind of like to hang on to it till I at least do another one. Uh, so that way I don't forget kind of the history of what I've been working on. I could go back and watch my videos too. That's kind of why one thing good about that and see what I've, I've done in the past. So I have this one distressed just around the edges again and I'll put it back where it's gonna go here. Um, so I'm not going to put any envelopes or flips or anything in this one. I think if I want to add those later, I can hinge them in. So um, I just, I don't want to bulk up my spine too, too much. This one I did also choose to put an envelope in. And it's right here. And I have not distressed this envelope. So I just kind of plopped it here. But I like, again, how the colors worked uh, for these pages. So I'm gonna put that one there, but first I need to distress this one. And also maybe think about how it's gonna open and if I need to line it or anything like that. So let's start with this step that I know I wanna do. So this one has some windows and you know, there's a couple things you can do with the windows. I've shown in previous videos where I've actually taken the acetate out and embossed some like uh, some vellum and then put back in there so that you have kind of a more opaque window. So it's not, it's a window, but it's not a window kind of thing. And you can do something like that. Uh, or just leave it like it is, but then I don't really want to see that white through there. So I think I need to I have to kind of decide how this is going to open. If I open it like this, then I may just dirty this edge up and call that good, glue that down, and then just cover this side with some dictionary page. I think it'll make it thick enough. 
and it'll make it easier for me to do. So I need this to be darker. The other alternative, which I've shown before too, is when you print these, I tucked this inside to print just because I kind of thought I might be gluing that down. You can also close the envelope, glue it shut, and then print, and then you know cut the top off, and then you've made a slit that way. But because I've already printed it with it tucked inside, I kind of need to do it this way. And then I might, you know, where the envelope, that is kind of not glued all the way. Uh, I might want to do that too. The other thing that I've done in the past, but then I have this white, is to trim that little corner, but I kind of like having that print there. So I think what I'll do is put the paper on the inside first. And then I want to glue that little bit down so that it doesn't pop up. And then maybe make sure I have my edge blended in. Okay, so I have my envelope that's glued down. That's got book page. This is white in there, but I, you know, you're not going to really see that too much. It's it's going to be a tight envelope, the card going in and out. I think that'll be fine. So this is going to go here, and just decide wherever you want it to go. It's going to get captured in the signature, regardless because there's pages inside of it. So just kind of put it where you want. Okay. So you may want to do more than that, but I think for this one, it's going to be just digitals, and then anything else that I add. Um, is going to be uh, hinged on or in another way. So I'm not going to put any uh, any more folios into my signatures. So I'm going to re be ready to go with that. I'm going to put it aside for now and show you the list of things we're going to need to do our actual cover. So I, I kind of got a head start. I started this video yesterday and then it was so stormy and thunder and kept scaring me that I ended up uh, scrapping it. So I'm starting over today. So for the cover, I decided I wanted to use a recycled book cover. I got lucky and I found one that was perfect for the height. You want, you know, if unless you want things to stick out around, um, which is a look and, and you might like that. Normally a book would have just a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth to, a, you know, an eighth of an inch on top and bottom. And then the same usually on this edge. This, I don't mind if things stick out. I usually like the bottom to at least be lined up so that if it's sitting on a shelf, you don't have things hanging out. But then it's okay uh, if you have room to have things sticking out the top and the side is okay. So you could use a recycled book if you have that. If you don't, you can also purchase chipboard and um, cut it to the size that you need. Uh, the other thing that I like to do because I like to recycle is to use recycled cereal boxes, pizza boxes, anything like that. I have done videos in the past using recycled things. The Bodhi Journal, I have a whole video on doing this type of cover, but this was done with recycled food containers. And you can, depending on the thickness of the, the cardboard that you're using, you can even double it up and make it thicker. And I think that's what I had done on this one to make it really sturdy like chipboard. So just use what you have. If you're going to use recycled food containers, if they are shiny, I recommend that you rough that up with a little sanding block or sandpaper before you glue them together because they will, if they're too shiny and glossy, they'll come apart. 
And to glue those together, you can use any kind of PVA glue works, Mod Podge works, anything like that um, that you have so that you get the thickness that you want. So like I said, I'm gonna use an actual recycled book cover. So you're gonna need two of those. Again, you just measure the size of your, you know, the largest piece of paper that you have, and then maybe add a quarter inch so that you have a little bit extra on the top and bottom, and then maybe, you know, a little bit, an eighth of an inch or so uh, wider than you need. So you'll get those two pieces, and then you need your center spine. Now for this to decide on how wide I wanted to make my spine, I kind of just looked at my three signatures, and I want to leave space I want them to have room to grow because this is three signatures with five folios. This, look how wide that is. This is also just three signatures. And I wanna say when I started, they were maybe only one, two, three, four, five. Let's see where the center is, six. maybe six I'm trying to find where my center was this is the center so this was only six folios in this one and you see how chunky they get so you kind of just need to look ahead how much stuff you want to put inside it and if you don't mind it being a gator mouth where it's flared um, that's okay too this one uh, that I just did. This is five signatures, but it's pretty much going out as a, as a naked journal. So it's got pockets and things in it, but it'll get filled up and it'll be, you know, kind of open when it's finished. So just, you know, kind of eyeball measure and just see. But I think for this one, um, this ended up being, I think about an inch, I want to say. Um, just a little over an inch, about an inch and an eighth is the width. And then I ended up leaving a little gap, which I like to do, and I'll explain that too in a second here. But so you just kind of decide how, how much room you want for your journal. And then you're gonna need, what I used is, um, I, I did this in the last one and I really like how it works, so I'm gonna kind of continue to do that. You see how you have that curved piece? When I did this one, I just use a flat piece of cardboard and it, it works out fine, you know, it's a different look, but it's not authentic to how a book looks. A book uh, that is is put in with a like a floating spine uh, is rounded. So this one was done a different way. So I, I decided I really kind of like, like that because it, it looks like an authentic book. So I decided to do the same thing for this one. And to do that, there's a couple ways. I started saving paper towel tubes. And they're perfect because they are made where they are spiral and it, it gives you that, that curve like a spring that wants to hold that shape. So you can see even when you cut them apart, they still stay curved. So I just take a scissors, cut that. It won't, you won't be able to get it straight. Don't worry about that. Just to get it open. And then you just, I use my guillotine tr paper trimmer just to get all my straight lines. And then I leave them kind of big until I know how, how big of a spine I'm gonna need, you know, and then just trim them as I need to. And then same thing, trim the height after. So I just kind of save this, these things. But I really like how easy it is. Now, if you don't have a paper towel holder and you don't wanna wait till you have one empty, you can also just use a piece of card, heavy card stock, a piece of recycled, you know, food container, pizza box, whatever, and then just use your scoreboard or a ruler and a bone folder or something to make score lines a quarter inch apart. But if you do that, then you can fold all those and give yourself that curved piece. So two ways to do it, um, but this one is just easier because it's already curved. Now, I watched a video a couple days ago, and I'll put a link down below if I remember, from Bohemian Crafting. She's one of my favorite people to watch. She's just a, an amazing, I wanna say an engineer when it comes to journals. Uh, I just love watching her. So she just did one uh, where she made a cover for, um, her son had made three signatures and she he wanted her to make a cover for him. So I took a couple of the things that she did, I just loved. So I'm gonna share and try to reference those back that those were her ideas. When she did hers, she did the scoring with a flat piece and her th this piece was actually wider and was glued to the cover, the inside of the cover, because it gets covered later, but that's how hers worked. 
Mine, I'm doing a little bit different. I ended up, because this is a curved piece, if I had these flaps that were gonna get glued down, those were also curved. Now I need them to lay flat and I thought they would just keep popping up. So I just went ahead and trimmed mine um, to the width that I like and left a gap because if you take an actual book, they have that curved piece, but there's always that little kind of indentation there. And that's because there's a little bit of a gap between the cover and that piece. So that just kind of gives it again, that authentic look. This one's a little wider. It ends up, um, but I think, you know, I think I'm going to kind of get that, that look in the end by leaving that little bit of a gap. So you need uh, this piece, the two cover pieces. You're going to need, because of the way that I'm going to sew my signatures in, I wanted another piece. This was just, this was from aluminum foil container. And I cut this piece, the height of my pages, roughly, and then the width also, because this is the piece that's going to get glued into my thing. And, and then that way, it's a floating, it's a floating spine, if that makes sense. Okay. So you need this piece, same width, and then it's a little shorter than my book cover, but the height of my signatures. So that little piece. Then you need some kind of um, cover for the outside. Uh, that could be anything that you want to do. You could, you know, not cover it with fabric. You could paint the cover. You could have, I could have left this one if it was in a condition or a color that I liked. Like this is just an old book cover. You can just leave it how it is. In, in, and use it that way. I would have done it for this one, but I didn't have one that I really liked with my journal. So, you know, I was kind of limited to what size I had and not pretty colors, it was like bright yellow. So I ended up wanting to cover that. Now, the other tip that I took from Eva's video was um, something I hadn't done and I just, I loved the idea, is she covered, um, she knew that when she, the fabric she had chosen, you were gonna be able to see through. And I had the same issue because I used my scrim that I love. And I'll show that in a second for newbies. But she knew that she was going to be able to see through the fabric she chose. So she put book page behind it. That way she didn't mind if she saw it through there a little bit. So mine, I think you actually see through more than hers. But I just love, love, love that idea. So I used some of the same dictionary page that I had just kind of pulled out here. Because it was, it fit one, one page, fit the whole cover. So I just covered, you know, put a piece on each. I went ahead and made it a little bit bigger so that I could fold it over like a gift wrap, you know, so that it would cover this ed these edges too. So I just glued that down with a glue stick and then I took my scrim, which is for new people. Um, oh, this is not the, oh, this is the one I used. So I have had this scrim forever, long before I did any of this book stuff. And I just love it. It's it's nice and sheer. And it doesn't have a big grain in the weave. I had sold a bunch of this. I was sharing it with everybody. And now I'm very down to very little. And I can't find this exact one. So I'm hoarding it now. But I'm still using it because I love this. Uh, the one that I ordered in the meantime, which I also had in my Etsy shop. And it also has sold out. But you can see it has kind of... Um, a grain in it it's a little bit different than this one even it's the sheerness of it um, if you can see this one is more sheer than this one and I like the sheerness um, because I like layering things and I want to see things through you still would have been able to see through this one so if you are somebody that has purchased this from me you can see that's going to look really good too so either one you know you may have something similar there's lots of different qualities and that kind of thing of scrim you could use cheesecloth or any kind of gauze gauzy fabric because that's basically what this is so you can use that if you wanted to do one like this so glue down your you know your book page or dictionary page whatever music sheet paper whatever would be really pretty even a patterned paper even another digital you know you could maybe want this autobiography thing to show through so you actually glue that down and then you glue the sheer fabric over it just I like having that texture like an actual book you know this is kind of like book cloth you know covered so it kind of gives it that book cloth kind of feel to it and I really like that so I took my piece of scrim 
and then just used, I used this quick glue, which is a PVA glue that I got from a lampshade company that I used to make lampshades. And I just really like how it works, how quick it is. But any kind of PVA glue, there's book binding glue, that kind of thing, you can use a Fabri-Tac, anything like that to glue down your fabric and then let it dry. When I glued this down, again, I had a little extra hanging over. Um, I did one side and then you want to use like a credit card or something to kind of really get in that little groove, you know, to keep that groove there while it's drying. And, you know, then it's kind of all nice one piece. Uh, then, you you know, fold over, do your corners nice and, and glue that down. I, I should say one tip that I, I kind of came up with, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's how it's supposed to be done or not, but I was kind of struggling with how do I keep this piece where I want it, you know, while they're detached to glue this all down together. So what I did was I, I laid it all out, leaving the little gap, and I just used a little bit of painter's tape. And I've already removed it now, but I had just used a little bit of painter's tape to hold this where I wanted it uh, until I had everything glued to my paper and then I just took it off. So that was um, getting my cover covered. So you want to, you know, figure out whatever fabric. It could be a patterned fabric. Maybe your your book is completely different style and, you know, you want leather on it or something. You know, just whatever you choose. And then I also knew that I wanted to then cover something here. And I had taken, uh, when I did this other journal, if you watched this video, I had three different things I was considering for this part here. And one of the two of them the other two were this piece which i thought might look good with this whole look and the other piece was this one which was some of my scrim that i had dyed with rust and then this little doily and i ended up i love how this one looks so if you kind of you know you just audition things and see what you like so kind of envisioned this being my my book and i just really love how this looks it just kind of, you know, it has that vintage hanky that you're going to see when you open this, you know, this whole deal. Uh, you kind of get a taste of that on the outside of the book. And so I had already, in preparation to use it on the other one, I had already just kind of stitched it to this other fabric. So I, I really like it. I like the colors. I just, I wanted it to kind of stay a little simple and subtle for this part of the cover. So I really liked, instead of just the plain white, having that book dictionary page behind it. But then I think what I'm gonna do, so this won't, this goes on last anyway, is I think I wanna do some slow stitching on this just to introduce a little color, you know, take some of the colors from the inside of the journal and even some little tiny seed beads and things I think would just be really pretty. So this I'm gonna have to work on in the evening, so this will come back. But it's kind of a good idea to kind of figure out all the parts and pieces if you want them to, you know, coordinate. So I'm gonna set that aside to work on tonight. And then the other piece that I need, this was a fabric that I created using my digital kit. Uh, one side, it's it's an eight and a half by 11. One side is one of my fresco finishes. I think probably I used one that was in, here I'm just going to see if I can maybe find which one it was oh I think it might be this one yeah I'm pretty sure it's close to this one if it's not so if you could see this background is a fresh one of my fresco papers and so on this side I used this same design and then but I just did the whole the whole side of it so I would have a width of uh, usable pieces for my journal. So I'm going to use this as my cover for this little piece. It's going to get glued to here. And then that will be flaps here. So you need a piece that's at least, you know, it's got to be as wide as this. And then you want some extra. And it doesn't really matter how much, you know. This is probably about an inch on either side. So, you know, maybe a three, three and a half inch strip that is going to get glued down. That's going to get covered up too. So that's going to get glued to that. And that will be my piece that my signatures get sewed into. So I have that. And then the other piece that I need to finish this off 
would be my end papers. So this, I, I did a little few practice things. This was an end paper that I actually used behind, you know, it's, it's, it's behind this one. And so I thought, well, that would be a fun one to use for my actual end paper. Okay, so I have my cover close to ready here. Um, I have my signatures, and then now I just need to glue this little piece here, and then we can sew them in and put that end paper in, and then my cover is done. So let's see. I can use glue, glue stick, something that's just going to, you know, glue fabric to this. Actually, this will be a good test for me because I have I don't know that I've used this on fabric. I mean, it'll glue it down. I just don't know how permanent it will be. So on my piece of fabric, I'll make sure I put a lot. Because it was fabric I printed on my printer, I was kind of limited on my design. I didn't print it borderless, which if I had, which I now wish I would have, then I would have plenty of length in my fabric to fold over my edge. And you can see in this one, I really don't. Okay, we'll see how permanent that is. So what I'm talking about is this edge. It will look really finished if I fold that over. If I just don't mind a grungy look, then I could leave these kind of hanging out. They're still going to be within my spine of my book. You see here? You know, so it's okay. But if I really want that finished thing, then I will fold that over. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to try and see if I can. And I'll show you on this real book. So they have this little piece and I, I think it's called a headband. I think that's what Eva said. So this is actually stiff um, because it, you, you could actually, you know, have this be taller and then it, it folds over. Or I've seen these where it's just a little piece of fabric. It looks like this. So this is obviously from a wider spine. So I could, I could trim it to fit. Um, and if I have the other one, this would actually even be a fun color to do. So I would, I could put that there and then it looks, has that authentic book look. Okay. So I might look, dig through and see if I have, before I glue it in and see if I have the other side of that, that might be kind of fun. I have too many things here. Or I may have two of you know, one for the top and one for the bottom. And in my case, actually, if I only had one for the top, that would that would be okay with me. Here's another one. It's a different color. But I save these when I get the books, and then that way I have I have those pieces of oh here it is. That's it. Okay, I think I'm gonna use those. So see it's good to save all those little every little piece. Okay, so this needs to dry, it's kind of curling because it's still not quite dry. But I think I'm gonna try to glue that over. And because it's it might be it might be uncooperative, I'm gonna use my art glitter glue. And then for these, I'll need to cut these. Okay, so I have those. Obviously, these are not necessary, but you can also uh, make them get a little piece of uh, your scrap, you know, of this, and just cut a little thin strip. That's what um, Eva did in hers. She just cut little thin strips and then covered them with another fabric, you know, a cute fabric. But I saved these, so I'm going to use those. Okay, um, let's see. I don't know if this held at all. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. That works for me. I think what I'll do, since this will get covered, I'm going to just trim these off. So I just I just trimmed those off. Okay, good enough. So then I think I'm going to go ahead and put these on here. Okay. 
Okay, now I can sew my signatures to that. So I want to make three kind of lines where my signatures are gonna go. I have already poked my holes just because I started. I just used my little recycled, recycled materials pad that I use to poke through. Um, if you're new to this and you don't have all the book binding tools, you can find on Amazon really cheap little kits that will have the thread and needles and the, even the little, um, the awl and all that kind of, a bone folder, all that kind of stuff. I had bought this little book binding kit from We Are Memory Keepers um, that is great because it does a, a lots of different, had a little booklet that had all these different Japanese stitches. Um, so this is very versatile and then it's, it has this platform for you to poke, came with the poking tool, the thread, needles, all that stuff. So this is handy to have and I use it. I don't really need it for this type of journal. Um, I could if I wanted to be really even. This is great um, if you're doing any kind of exposed stitching because you have this guide and so everything's always perfectly lined up. If you're just doing um, something where your stitches aren't gonna show, then you can just eyeball it. You don't even have to measure. So on this one, I, I like to do um, for this type of signature, a five hole pamphlet stitch. And these are not gonna all be lined up because I've I've been playing around with them since I poked the holes. So normally you would get everything lined up and the way you want it. And I'm gonna have to kind of find where my holes are now. Let's see if I can find the center. Okay, so normally to do this kind of an eyeball one, you just get all your signatures how you want in your hand and then I'm gonna poke five holes. So I'm gonna just eyeball the center, poke through. Uh, if you don't have something like this or that little thing, you can fold up a towel, like a bath towel, because then it's gonna be nice and thick and you can poke through it. Maybe you have a piece of foam, you know, any, any kind of thing that you can poke through without hitting your table. So you're just gonna poke through the center, um, maybe three quarters of an inch or so from the, each end and then kind of halfway between those. A lot of people I've seen use three hole pamphlet stitch and I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I like the five hole because I just think it's, it keeps everything more stable um, than just the three hole. The other reason is a lot of times I stagger things. They're not all lined up the same. And so I, I need, you know, they, I need something to straddle and maybe capture two holes. This envelope is only gonna catch this one hole. But because I have this stitched in here and here on either side of it in the next page, it's going to hold that in just fine. So the five hole one to me, it just gives you more options of catching your odd sized pieces. So I've got my holes punched. I did it in all of them already, um, but I need to do this piece now. Uh, so for this, I do kind of need to at least have them spaced evenly apart this way. So I'm going to get a ruler. If I have a clear one, it's easier to see because you can see through where your line will be. So I kind of want to find my center. This pattern fabric makes it a little hard to kind of see where my edge is. So I think I might fold this just to get my lines in. So I'm going to just eyeball. I don't really need it to be exact, but that looks to me about like the center. I kind of have this pattern in my fabric that I can kind of look at. So a pen or a pencil, it's going to get covered up anyway. Um, just something that you can kind of see that center line. And then I want to go either side of that again halfway. That way it'll give me a gap in between each of my signatures, which will leave me plenty of room for adding pockets and tags and that sort of thing. So one to one side, and that's probably a quarter inch or so. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, that way I have plenty of room in between each one. Okay, so I have that piece lines drawn. So I'm gonna take my first one that I have lined up now. I could do the center one first, but I think I'm just gonna go for this one. And I'm gonna line it up with that line that I plan to use. And I can see where my puncture holes are here. So I'm just gonna lay that down, use my pokey tool. So I, I, I like this method, honestly, because it does not have to be perfect. 
Okay, so I have my holes lined up for my first one. I'm gonna go ahead and do all the holes first because it'll be easier than having, you know, a signature sewn in. Okay, so I have all my holes. So you just really wanna keep, remember where the top and the bottom are. On mine, I know that this is going to the back side of my book, so I know that this is the top. Okay, so I don't need this anymore. And then to sew these in, Again, you can order a kit if you don't have these things. If you don't want to order a kit, you can actually make do with some other things. This came with my We Are Memories Keepers, and I still have some. Um, I actually have ordered some white because I really like using the wax thread. Uh, it helps to grip as you're sewing uh, and tie your knots and everything. Everything gets nice and tight in there, uh, and it's a good thickness. So. I would recommend it, you at least using a thicker one. This actually, you could use dental floss, maybe you know, wax dental floss is about like this. The other thing you could use is, this is just some upholstery button and craft thread. So it's thicker than like all purpose thread. It's sturdier. You could use this and wax it yourself. So this you can just get it, you know, anywhere. This is actually beading thread. It's even a little thicker. And again, you can wax this yourself. Uh, you could either use beeswax is what you'd wanna use, but in a pinch, this is just a little votive candle you can use um, in, sew, in the sewing department. They also have a little plastic ring that has little notches in it that has wax inside, and you just run it through that. So um, I do recommend using waxed thread. The other thing you could use is this is already whacked it from the beading and leather area in your craft store. And this is about one millimeter. It's just nice. If you're going to do an exposed spine where you're going to see your thread, uh, you might want it to be decorative like this and colorful. Maybe you're adding beads to it or something. So you could also use this. And this is also already waxed cord. So something waxed. And then if you buy those kits, you'll get needles that come with it. Um, this one has a really large eye, and I don't really want my holes to be that big for this one. But the good thing about this is you want one with a blunt tip. And the reason you want one with a blunt tip is if you uh, go through and you're going through another hole that already has has been had thread go through it, if you were to pierce that and go, you know, th go through the thread again, you won't be able to adjust anything later because you'll have split your thread. So, it, and it's just going to weaken it. So what I have done is you can buy, uh, if you don't have an actual book binding needle that's blunt like that, you can just use a regular needle. You can buy little kits of like upholstery needles and then you'll have that curved one which works for a different type of binding that you'll need. But if you take this like a big cruel embroidery needle or something like that, just take some little um, needle nose pliers usually have a little cutter that's pretty heavy duty and just cut that tip off and then use a file i happen to work with jewelry so i have these files and then just dull that tip down and that way it won't be as sharp to puncture your um split your threads so i'm gonna use this one and I actually am not even going to cut it off of this yet because I don't know how much thread I need. And that way I won't waste any. So I'm just going to thread my needle. I'm going to take my first signature um, and go to my first line. And you can start, you know, wherever you want. But if you want your threads to not be sticking out anywhere, um, I just start in the middle. And I'm going to start rather than on the inside of my book, I'm going to start on this part that's gonna get hidden. And that way my knot won't be tied in the middle of my book where you see. Now, if you want a grungy look where you want to see those strings in there, then knock yourself out. You just do it from the inside of your center of your signature. So I'm trying to keep these all lined up so my holes stay lined up. So I've gone through from the back and I'm gonna go through the center here and then I'm going to go up the next hole and through my back. And then up one more hole. And finding my center again, go through this top hole.
kind of pull everything as you go. I'm kind of not doing that very well. And this is where the wax thread is nice because, oops, I lost my needle. This is where the wax thread is good because it'll really kind of grip that and won't be, you know, loosey-goosey coming out. So then I'm going to, I've gone up, down, back up through here, and now I'm going to go back down and back through that hole. This is where you don't want to split that thread. So it is kind of an important thing to have that blunt needle. And now I'm going to go back through the center again and come up inside. And you can see I'm going to be coming back through, so I think this is actually the link that's going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to go down through here and then back up through the bottom hole. Oops. And then you see, I have these lines are all filled in. I need to go through this one. I have a blank spot here. So I'm gonna go back up. Oh, lost it again. Back through. And now I'm back to the center where I need to tie. So I did pretty good guessing how long to make that. Just make sure everything is, you know, pretty tight in there. I like how that is. And again, I, I can't, you know, stress that enough. That wax thread makes that so much easier to grip. Same with when I'm going to tie these knots. So I'm just going to... And then a the third time. Okay, and this is all going to get, um, you know, be inside that floating spine. So I'm going to trim these off a little bit. And you could tape those down or glue them down uh, so that they're not flopping around. Um, but I may do that at the end. So I'm going to do the other two. Okay, have that all in there. Now I can just tuck these and cover this with piece of paper if you want. Not that that's going to show really, but I'll, I'll know it's all kind of glued down together. Okay, so now I have my book block ready to go into my cover. My signatures are in there nicely. I have, you know, this fabric to look at in between. It's nice. You know, plenty of room to add pockets and things in there. So now I just need to glue it into here. Like so. Simple, simple. So for that, use something that's going to be, you know, good for fabric on another surface, which for me is this quick glue. So I'm just going to kind of 
set this where it wants to go. And I'm not gonna glue along the spine, I'm just gonna glue this fabric down. So I'm just gonna So I'm just getting, using this little card to kind of get in that little gap that I left. And then again, this is gonna get covered. So you just let that dry and move to the other side. Dry pretty quick, but I don't want my paper sticking to it. So if you used a lot of glue and this is there's glue out here, you might put a piece of wax paper or something like that so that you're you don't accidentally glue these down, which is where they're gonna go. But see how now my fabric kind of is a little proud. So I'm gonna use that other one, I think. I'll this use this one because it'll cover everything. And I can trim, I can trim just the hair off of that. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go trim this edge. Okay, I trimmed that top edge while I had it as one piece so they'd be the same. I cut them in half because I need them in half. Oh, I like, I like that. Okay, so now I just need to glue this down. And I don't mind a little of the, that peeking through actually. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball a little space around this way. Okay, I'm very happy with how that turned out. The, the glue, oops, that needs to be a little shorter. I must not have cut them off half and half. Hmm. Okay, so I need to trim that. So this, when I did my paper, I didn't check that I was not over this. So that was a, an error. Let's see if I can tear that off. Okay, I think I have it to that point. Now, you saw me struggling a little bit with this edge. I neglected to make sure that when I had that paper trimmed that I was not over this seam. And I, I, I thought I had trimmed this five and a half inches, but I didn't really pay enough attention, I guess. So you can, you know, you can tear it and make it look grungy and it looks intentional, especially if you go back and do the backside too. So that's what I have done. Um, this side actually wasn't hanging over so much, but it was easier to tear. So it just kind of gives me an even grungier look. It was difficult to tear this because, and it's a little bit ripply, which I also don't mind, um, because I had printed this onto tea stained paper. And when you print on tea stained paper, you know, the paper's kind of shrinks when it dries and you iron it, but it's never, never completely flat. So you always end up with little, you know, kind of stuff like that. But again, I love grungy. I want it to look old and tattered in a way. So I don't mind that at all. So I'm, I'm really ready to just do any more additions inside that I want to do. And I want to add this piece with some embellishment on it. And then maybe some kind of a little closure you know, I don't think I'll decorate that up too much because I really kind of just like it plain. So I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, let's just do a little quick flip through here and see how all my signatures came out. My little envelope. Lots and lots of writing space. You know, I'm going to add some pockets, maybe some tabs. I don't know just a few things, or I can just sell it like this, you know, all, all built and ready to go of just a naked journal. I do like to add a little, little touches here and there, you know, just cause it's fun, maybe some little pockets. 
little corner pockets or something. That way, everything out in the world is a little bit different. So all done from digitals and just a few other papers. So that's it. I love that. Okay, so I'll finish it up. Maybe do a few little, um, you know, embellishments here and there. Do my spine, my closure, and a final flip through, hopefully, in the next couple of days. That was a pretty quick project. So um, grab your stuff. Have a great rest of your day and go make something. Bye.